Hello, everyone, and thank you for subscribing to this second webinar on sensory data analysis. Today, we'll be talking about how to relate preference to sensations. There has been a first webinar on sensory data analysis. It took place maybe two days ago. My name is Jean-Paul Malouf. I'm a statistical consultant at Excelstat, Excelstat, which is the statistical software I will be using today to illustrate this uh, webinar. So many of you already use it. And for those of you who haven't heard of it or um, haven't used it yet, this is a good opportunity to discover it. If you have any question all, around, all along the session, don't hesitate to submit it in the chatting pop-up window. And I will try to answer as many questions as I can at the end. So I will try to be as intuitive as I can in my uh, speech, uh, but unfortunately, we won't be able to go very deep into the details of uh, how the statistical techniques we'll be seeing today work because they are very complex and uh, rich. Unfortunately, just in one hour, it's impossible to, to see everything about them, but you will have an overview at least. So here's an outline of the webinar today. I'll first start with a few words on Exerstat. I'll tell you who we are. Then I'll do a small reminder about what we've seen in the last webinar. Then I will show you one way of mapping preference data without reference to the sensory attributes using one technique called internal preference mapping. After that, we'll see three different methods which allow relating the preference to sensory attributes. And one of the main differences between these three methods, which are external preference mapping, penalty analysis, and data analysis, is the way the sensory attributes are measured. So on one, what scale we will be measuring sensory attributes. So with preference mapping, external preference mapping, we'll be measuring attributes on quantitative or ordinal scales. In penalty analysis, we'll be measuring attributes on just about right scale. And in catadata analysis, we'll be measuring attributes on a binary scale, so presence or absence of the attributes. So these are the four main features we'll be seeing today. So internal preference mapping, external preference mapping, penalty analysis, and kata data analysis. Here are a few words on Excel stat. Excel stat is a statistical software that works as an add-on to Excel on PC and on Mac. It's also available for Excel 365 and Google Sheets. So it's available for use in the cloud. In a few numbers, Excel stat has more than 220 statistical features. It has more than 25 employees working at your service, more than 150 users worldwide, 300K monthly with visits on the website. It's available in seven languages and has offices in three time zones, so America, Europe, and Japan. There are 10K monthly downloads of the software. Excelstat is developed by the Adinsoft company, and Adinsoft is hosted by a private lab called the Data Factory, which is based in Bordeaux in France. So it hosts four other expert companies around data. And uh, there are 45 people working at this, uh, this lab. And this lab organizes more than 25 workshops, events, and training around data every year. So it's a very active lab in Bordeaux around data. Excelstat is available in the form of eight different solutions to meet your specific needs. So there are generalist solutions such as basic, basic plus, and premium. Basic holds all the mainstream and standard statistical features such as ANOVA or regression or logistic regression or PCA or clustering methods. Basic Plus will add machine learning features to Basic. Premium contains the complete 220 Excel stat features. And between Basic Plus and Premium, you have intermediate solutions which are more oriented uh, toward the specific fields. For instance, we have Sensory, which is really made for sensometrics. And the four features we'll be seeing today are part of the Sensory solution and are also part of the premium solution, which includes all of the Excel set features, okay? There are more than 220 tutorials associated to downloadable data sets. 
uh, at the help.exercise.com website. So each feature has its own tutorial available online, a tutorial that will guide you through the configuration of the dialog box and the interpretation of the results and a few words on how the feature works. Okay, so you have many interesting learning resources. To access this page, you simply need to click on your PDF on this page here. There's also a specific Excelstat YouTube channel called Stat Cafe, in which you will find different short videos presenting several features with intuitive explanations and uh, illustration using Excel stats. You also have webinar recordings available freely on the website, so you can access them right here. So we've already recorded and uploaded seven webinars. Six of them are an introduction to uh, statistical methods, so to how, to how to describe data, how to explore and cluster data, so statistical testing, statistical modeling, and ANOVA, and supervised machine learning and prediction. So all of these webinars are available online. You can watch them back online. So what have we seen in the last webinar? We started talking about sensory data analysis. Sensory data analysis is the science that uses statistics and design of experiments to evaluate human senses. Human senses, which are uh, touch and hearing and smell and taste and um, vision. That's it. So the purpose of this science is to optimize consumer goods. Here are a few definitions of things we'll be talking about today. What is a product? A product is an object which is characterized by sensory or affective properties. What is a panelist or a judge or an assessor? It's a person evaluating products. A panel is a group of panelists and panelists can be experts or consumers recruited on the market. A sensory attribute is a sensory descriptor of a set of products. Example, acid or salty or crunchy for food products, vibrant for uh, car products, and uh, so on. Then effective testing is, is measuring the degree of acceptance or liking or uh, satisfaction or security or any other emotion triggered by a product. So there are two distinct blocks of variables we'll be investigating today sensory attributes or how the products are perceived by human beings and the emotions that are triggered by these products and today we're going to relate both blocks of variables okay so last time we've seen several types of sensory experiments one of them we stressed a lot on it it was difference experiments the purpose of this kind of experiments is to evaluate distances among products without getting into the details of sensory characterization, without measuring each sensory attribute apart. So among these experiments, we use experiments that allowed us to answer this kind of questions. So does changing the recipe of a product induce a difference in its general perception? In this case, we use discrimination tests such as the triangle tests and the two AFC tests that we've seen together two days ago. Then we ask other questions. For instance, is it possible to map products according to their global differences? So we've seen projective mapping and free sorting experiments from which we extracted data and uh, which allowed us to map the distances among the products by using special statistical techniques such as the status technique. We've seen another mainstream type of experiment, the descriptive, descriptive experiments, where judges evaluate products over several attributes and sometimes over several sessions. So technically, this kind of experiment is a bit more uh, complicated technically to uh, implement than different experiments. But you get a more thorough description of the products from the sensometric point of view. 